what's up everyone? I'm Jay Dreamers and welcome to Truth in Movies. This is a segment that I do. I'm trying to do it every Monday so it can be Truth in Movie on Monday. Um, but basically we break down the esoteric symbolism and some of my and your favorite flicks. So let's jump right into it. Uh, I do want to give a heads up. I'm going to give some updates towards the end of this video about my channel, what to expect going forward. We're going to do a lot more videos every week. I'm really excited about it. So without further ado, let's check out this movie. Now it's not really a movie per se, okay? This is on Netflix. It's a series and there are little shorts, okay? Seemingly unrelated to one another. Kind of like the Twilight Zone. Remember how like the Twilight Zone had unrelated episodes? They're all weird and strange and they had their own flavor, but they all seem to kind of have like a similar theme all throughout tying them together as if it was part of a larger story. Now. I've got, what's up to everybody in the chat? Hey, good vibes. Um, so I just want to, I just want to say, I do believe that every movie, every television show, everything that we see on, uh, in the media is essentially telling us and retelling us our story over and over again, whether it be a forgotten past or a forgotten future or a past that, or a present that we don't acknowledge any longer. So let's talk about love, death, and robots, okay? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little screen sharing here on my side. I've got Netflix pulled up here. I'm not gonna play them, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the episodes. And normally what I'll do on Truth and Movies, Truth and Movie Monday is, I'll actually have lots of different little screenshots and pictures of the movie. But because this one has so many different television shows, I'm actually just going to start at the beginning and I'm going to kind of give a brief synopsis and description as to how these are all related. Now, I'm going to cut right to the chase and just let you guys know every single one of these is our story. Okay. Now, it's written as if it's you're watching somebody else go through something. But if you look with esoteric eyes. If you're able to make these connections and put the pieces together and follow the trail of breadcrumbs, you'll start to notice that they have this theme all throughout. For example, in Netflix, um, on this particular movie, uh, cats are a theme that runs all throughout. Not just cats, but cats like being something to be feared, something to be afraid of, something that could take over the world. We'll get to that. So let's jump right in. And uh, let me get the chat pulled up here too, so I can, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the chat so I can see everybody. What's up to everybody in the chat? Thanks for all your support, by the way. And I do wanna give a shout out to a couple of people who just left uh, something that's kind of brand new. Well, we'll do that at the end. We'll do that at the end. All right, so let's get to this movie here. Let's see, I just wanna make sure you can see what I'm seeing, you can. Okay, sweet. All right, so what I've done is I pulled up every episode. There's two seasons so far. The first season has way more episodes. So all of this, every single one of these episodes are essentially about some point in the timeline of our timeline or what I call the plasma apocalypse because our world is to me an apocalyptic world. We go through and suffer these resets every now and then. It's not something that I'm afraid of or that I would like you to be afraid of. It's something that I study and research so that I can be better prepared for when these things happen. Now, not only do I study the ancient world and old texts and modern academics, etc., and so on and so forth in order to get a better understanding for our long forgotten past, which is now turned into what I believe is called fantasy, um, extending all the way out into prophecy and our future, which repeats itself. Um, it's like we're on a loop and time repeats itself. So by understanding our forgotten past, we can better understand and know what to expect and what lies ahead for us. So without any further ado, let's start with the first episode. This one's called Zima Blue. I'm going to go through these kind of quickly and I'm going to bring up the chat here so that I can uh, check. If you have any questions or comments, type in at the at symbol and jdreamers and I'll try to get to you. For example, Christopher Artiga in the chat says, jdreamers, you have... To, you have to watch M. Night Shyamalan's Old and The Green Knight. A lot of hidden symbolism in the Plasma Apocalypse and Titans. You have to watch them. I heard it from you first. 
I will, actually. I think I heard it about that through the grapevine, and he is one of my favorite movie directors. I love him. Most people can't stand M. Night Shyamalan, or however you say his name, uh, just because his movies are so hard to comprehend or grasp for your average person. So, um, but not for me, and not for many of you, I'm sure. Zima Blue is the first episode. This is really interesting. Mostly it's talking about um, this guy who's an artist, and he's got this particular color of blue. He stretches his artwork to the furthest limits of his imagination and his own mind. So far to the point where he just sees that essentially, like, life is art. His life is art, that he himself is art. Now, I think it's really interesting just because of the blue concept and the blue gods that we've talked about before, how we have this period in time where it seems like there were these gods or these beings from other worlds that came down into our world and they were often described in certain cultures and areas around the world as being blue in tint and color. The blue gods. Now, I just want to throw this out there. I'm not sure if they were actually blue. I believe that maybe there's a good case to be made that they were more of like an albino pale white. However, because of the light spectrum in the world or their location and proximity to the blue beam that comes out of Mount Maru, it may have made them look like they were white. Much like if you wore a white t-shirt under a black light, your white t-shirt would turn bright blue. All right, so next we go to, I'm going to skip Blind Spot and Lucky 13, even though, you know, you could obviously talk about the Lucky 13 uh, reflecting the families that have come down from above and they created their 13 families, etc. I'm going to get to the good stuff. Alternate histories. This one says, want to see Hitler die in a variety of comically fantastic ways? Well, now you can. Welcome to Multiversity. So this one right here is about the fractal verse, what I call the fractal verse, and how out there beyond the limitations of our dome or our sky or the firmament or our atmosphere, however you'd like to see it, in what people commonly call space. There are these other worlds out there. I'm not talking about Venus and Mars than the way that it's presented. I'm talking closer towards the cosmology of Yggdrasil, of the Norse, how they had this sort of cosmological tree that branched out and had these other realms sitting on all the branches. I believe, so far, that those other realms, at least some of them, are possibly alternate Earths, that they're just like our world in every single way. Maybe the, uh, the geography is a little different. Maybe their timeline is a little different because, you know, their last reset, they went further or less further in their technological advancements, right? So whenever we see these shows that look like they're about time travelers like going through these portals and landing in like a different time on Earth, my theory is maybe that they're not actually time traveling. Maybe they think that they're, they've traveled through time, backwards or forwards, because when they go through that portal, they land on an alternate Earth. Everything looks and feels just like home, but the events are a little scattered, right? Different timelines. All right, uh, this helping hand one, this is about an astronaut up in space, and uh, it's kind of slow. I didn't really like that one too much, honestly. It's, it's good. You know, it's all right. However, there's a lot of problems that I have with the dynamics of the physics in space, or what they call space, especially when there is this biggest, largest vacuum ever, an infinite vacuum, things just sucking everything, zero gravity, right? And then they do this thing where if you, like, have a spurt of air, somehow that's going to move you in the opposite direction. I am not a huge fan of that because if you spurt out air in the largest infinite vacuum ever known, uh, the vacuum would just suck the air away from you. It wouldn't push you away in the other direction. So um, I'm not a huge fan of how they portray that. I'm going to skip that one and go to Fish Night. Fish Night is really cool. Uh, these are all really short too, by the way. See, the, this one's like 10 minutes long. This one's 10. This one's 16. They're real short shows, so you can easily get one in. All right, looking over at the chat, it looks like Kelvin Moore is in the chat. It says, J Drummers, please give a review on the Bach Saga. Ooh, all right. I'll have to check that out first because I don't know if I've seen that. All right, so Fish Night's really cool because these guys stop in this desert scene, right? Let me see if I can pull it up here. There we go. All right, so they stop in this desert kind of scene, right? Hold on. How do you pause it? Let's pause it. <laughs> all right. Hey, did we just get some, a member? 
Oh yeah, Bradley Francis just joined the Good Vibe Tribe. Welcome, Bradley. All right, so these guys stop in this desert, right? And this guy right here, he's looking around. He's like, you know, all of this used to be ocean everywhere. All of this was underwater all over the place. And um, the other guy is kind of like, oh, that's cool. But then he says, I wonder, you know, if people can have ghosts everywhere, what about the animals of the past? And then as their, their, car, their cars broke down in the desert, so they're looking around. All of these amazing creatures just start swimming around in this desert sky at nighttime. They come to life. And this guy, the newbie over here, he starts getting caught up in all of it. And he starts taking off his shirt and everything. Oh, what's going on in the chat? Hey, Tiffany Lee just, just joined the Good Vibe Tribe. Welcome, Tiffany. It's good to see you. All right, so this guy is in the desert. His buddy is like, the desert used to be covered in water all over the place, right? And they're talking about the ghosts of time past in this desert. And they're seeing these things. You could say they're using their imagination, or if it's real, it doesn't matter. There is substance of reality to what's being presented to you, right? And so this guy takes off his clothes. Next thing you know, he starts floating up into the sky to be with the fish or the ghost fish or whatever they are, right? He floats right up into the sky. Now, this is plasma apocalypse symbolism. It's what people, religious people call or refer to Christians mostly as the rapture, right? Getting sucked up into the sky. That is a reality in my world when gravity hits, hits a neutral point or the electromagnetics of our world hits a neutral point and everything floats for a bit. So this guy floats up in the sky, daydreaming about the other times that once existed. There's jellyfish all over the place. There's little tentacles everywhere and fish. But then there's this huge shark, this little ghost shark, the red one, right? Right in front of the moon. See how it leaves that little red streak across the moon? And this shark basically goes and eats this guy. <laughs> um, I will give you also a heads up on this movie or this series. Um, a lot of things in this series actually end abruptly so they basically every single one of these shows gets right to the meat and the action of whatever's going on and allows you and respects your intelligence enough to to re to recognize that you've already put together kind of the gist of what's going on so that you can get right to the point i love this show okay let's check out another one. Oh, you see that one did you see the the whales and stuff this is a little preview of it right this one's about the kids and christmas okay let's just go back because i got to talk about all these all right so we talked about the space whale one the one that had little space whales in the sky and stuff uh let's go to the next one is shapeshifters this one is really interesting this is about hey what just happened in the chat Kelvin Moore brings magic to the Good Vibe Tribe. Welcome, Kelvin Moore. Wow, that's awesome. Welcome, Kelvin. All right, so the shapeshifters. This one talks about uh, wolves and werewolves, actually. And we've gone over werewolves about the plasma apocalypse, and we've got a whole video about it, basically talking about the origin and the etymology of the word wolf and werewolf and where do they come from. And we basically came to the conclusion that uh, the werewolves are possibly older versions of the elven race or those beings that come down from above who are very, I'm trying to get like a clear picture. Jeez, it's all blurry everywhere. Oh my God, everybody's joining the Good Vibe Tribe today. Wesley Carberry, welcome to the Good Vibe Tribe. Hey, everybody, man, I'm so excited. All right, so let's get back to this. Love, Death, and Robots, we're breaking it down. What are these episodes about? They're all interrelated. They're not op They're not uh, independent shows. Every single one of them is basically, you're watching the plasma apocalypse from various perspectives, from various points in time, right? So that's the key for me. And, and I see this not just in Love, Death, and Robots, but anytime I watch television or movies or whatever, I can see how they're all interrelated. Kind of like the Pixar theory, if you guys are familiar with the Pixar theory. The next one is called The Dump. The Dump is pretty cool. So this one, remember how I, okay, hold on. Let me get, let me get a good picture here. Now, remember how I was talking to everyone about, um, uh, what is it called? What is it? What is that called whenever it's like, um, God, I'm forgetting the word for it. 
Um, when it's oh steampunk. Okay, so every steampunk is very popular, right? It's kind of come up in the last few years or whatever. Um, and there's a whole steampunk culture, right? Well, a part of this steampunk world that I believe is real is that, like I said, all that stuff gets sucked up into the sky. There's zero gravity for a bit, but then there's a, a restoration period where gravity is restored to our world. Now, when that gravity is restored to our world, the things that did not get sucked up and out of our world and did not get stuck up in the neutral zone of our sky eventually fall back down and we have these huge piles of trash, essentially, junk, all over the place in our world. So the survivors, what they do is they start becoming pickers. They pick through the trash. They go through all of this ancient technology. A lot of them is for, have forgotten. Remember, there's a huge memory reset or a memory wipe that happens. There's worldwide amnesia. So people try to put the clues back together to figure out where they are, who they are. Uh, they go through all of this debris. That's why you see so many junkyards scenes in movies because that is symbolic of a portion of our timeline that we go through when all of our junk falls back down to the ground and we sift through it looking for these artifacts from the ancient world, technological advancements that we can try to reconstruct um, and put back together so that we can use them. Now, not a lot of people will understand how to put tech, old technology or modern technology back together. If I if I found a cell phone in the post-apocalyptic world, I would know how to turn it on, but I would not know how to make one. You know what I mean? So um, that's a part of the steampunk revolution, okay? These people go through ancient trash or technology, our garbage that falls back down from the sky. They try to make sense of it and they use it when and where they can. Sometimes they use it for its original purpose. Oftentimes it's actually repurposed. Jared Jaguar is feeling the vibe with the good vibe tribe. Welcome, Jared. Man, I'm so honored to have so many people joining today. All right, so let's get back to Love, Death, and Robots. We're breaking this down. We're figuring out how all of these episodes are actually interrelated. They're so beautifully constructed. Um, some of them are kind of cartoony. As, like this one right here, you can tell it's, it almost looks real, but it's actually not. Um, it's just technology. It's kind of like a, a real-looking cartoon sometimes. All right. Oh, also, I'd highly recommend Black Mirror if you're interested in this kind of stuff as well. Let's get to this next episode here. What do we have next? Um, hey, what's going on? What is going on in the chat today? This is insane. You guys are blowing my mind. Wait a minute. It was Anu Alalu. Anu Alalu says, greetings from the SFV818. Great show. Bad thing about technology is that there were, the more it progresses, the less we do for ourselves. Bring shop classes back to public schools. Cheers. Hey, I love that. I think there's a lot of things. And thanks for your donation too. Um, Anu Alalu. I appreciate you. Um, I think there's a lot of things that should be brought back to public schools. But I'm going to save that for another time. Probably when I'm venting. All right. So uh, the dump, we talked about that. Oh, the dump. I got to get back to that. Hold on. So in the dump, not only were there these huge piles of trash, but there were these monstrous creatures that found homes within the garbage in these dumps or whatever. So this guy actually, this old man right here, he befriends a phantazoid essentially. If you don't know what a phantazoid is, it's a, a term that I made up to describe these otherworldly animals and creatures that come down into our world from the heavens. They're heavenly creatures, they're monstrous, alien looking creatures, whatever you want to call them. That doesn't mean they're all bad. It doesn't mean you should just kill an alien creature if you see one, you know. I know we're kind of we're kind of conditioned to do that. Um, however, this guy right here, he has a pet. He has a friend who's basically a phantazoid that lives inside of this dump. And you'll notice that too. What? V 818 just donated five bucks. Wow, and he says, hey, keep it going, dude. History has a way of repeating itself. Just ask the League of Shadows. <laughs> We, we just got to keep on living. Living, brother. Cheers. Hey, thanks a lot, Day. I appreciate you. And also, Christopher Artiga just joined the Good Vibe Tribe. Welcome, Christopher. It's good to have you. Hey, let's blow up the chat right now. If you can, if you're in the chat, I would love to see all kinds of positive emojis for everyone who's showing support and joining the Good Vibe Tribe today. All right. Um, speaking of the dump, that actually reminded me of a scene in Star Wars. Do you guys remember how in the very first Star Wars movie or whatever it is in the uh, in the sequence, I forgot. 
Oh my god, what's going on today? Christopher Artiga! Welcome, Christopher Artiga. Okay, um, but remember in Star Wars how they like jumped into the trash chute? There's always some sort of a scene with like uh, a trash compactor, a, uh, a trash truck, right? Like in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder falls into the trash truck, etc. Um, and actually in the Marvel movies, they have an entire world that's like a garbage dump world where all this trash and and garbage is just falling out of this hole in the atmosphere in the sky on this alien planet, right? It's almost never an alien planet. How can we talk about any kind of an alien planet when all we're familiar with is Earth? All we're familiar with is this place, right? So I have a theory that while sometimes they make it look like they're talking about other places, in reality, they're talking about home. Uh, so let's go back up to good hunting. This one's really interesting. It's, uh, basically about people that turn into animals. I did make a video about that as well. People may actually morph. They may change. They may mutate whenever this plasma comes into our world. I believe based on my research thus far that the plasma outside of our world in what we call in academics, the plasma sphere has the ability and the power to possibly reconstruct DNA at the molecular level. Um, I'm not wise enough to tell you how that would work. I just have a feeling about it. Ho! Oh, Angel Lovebud donated $2 through the Super Chat. A little, a little sticker. It looks like a little Shiba Inu or something in the Super Chat. <laughs> hey, thanks, Angel. All right, let's go to this next one. I got to show you guys the rest of these uh, episodes before we run out of time. I am trying to keep my videos under an hour from now on since I'm going to be making so much more of them. But if I keep talking like this, I don't know if it's going to work out. <laughs> All right, so let's get to we're getting to the good stuff now. All right, so, oh, this one right here, Suits. Oh, my God, this is one of my favorite one. Okay, so this, this episode is our world, okay? At the end of this, let me just, I'm going to bring this up. I got to show it to you, actually. Okay, so they start off showing you this little world, this little country world or whatever it is. It looks like you're on Earth, right? And it's just got like your average farmers and stuff like that. And they're going through, getting ready to plow the field and whatnot. But occasionally they have these huge exosuits, these um, mechanical exosuits that they use. And they go out into the field where their cows are and they protect the cows from what? From these little portals that open up, as you can see right here. Uh, let me see if I can catch it here. So this portal opens up. Perfect. Oh my God. This portal opens up and these phantasoids literally come out of the portal, which is basically the edge of their world. This, these portals are attached to like some sort of a uh, wall that goes around their world or a dome. White Knight donated 14 bucks through the super chat. And, oh, and a cool sticker. Look at that sticker. All right. So if you can't, if you know what I'm talking about in the soup, in the chat, there's actually stickers that people are, are putting in there, which is pretty sweet. Thank you. So these phantasoids pop out of, of this uh, portal and they start to eat the cattle. Watch, let me play it for a bit. They jump out of there and they start to eat the cattle, right? Well, guess what the cattle is in the post-apocalyptic world when uh, the abyss opens up and these creatures and mon what people will probably call monsters come out. And there are predatory ones. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make it sound like it's not going to be perfectly safe or anything like that. On the contrary... <laughs> hey Henry, Henry just donated through the super chat and uh and got a little sticker in the super chat too. Thanks Henry. So, um let's get back to this Manus. You guys are you guys are making me blush right now. Thank you. I appreciate all your support. All right, so these guys attack the cattle. Guess what the cattle is in this world? It's us. I mean, it's animals and stuff like that, but these are the predators. Now, for a good example, I actually have uh broken down the phantasoids by class and by type in on my website, jdreamers.com. So if you want to get some more great visuals of the different types of phantasoids and what to expect, um, a good movie to watch for that is actually, um, uh, what was it called? Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, right? A lot of these movies talk about these monsters that come into our world from time to time or aliens or whatever you want to call them. That's what this is. Now, on this farming world, which is what this is, which is where we are, Right? I want to show you the end. They actually zoom out on this world. Uh, so these phantasoids, this huge hole, actually I have to show you the huge hole. This huge hole opens up in their dome and they fight like millions of phantasoids that come in. 
Where is it? Where is that hole? Let's see. Oh, right about here. Let's see if we can just play it for a bit. So they're in these exoskeletal suits and they go to the edge of their world where the dome comes down. Now, let me pause that. Oh, that was super bright. Okay, right there. You can see there's this huge hole that opens up in their sky, okay? It's actually like, you know, it's the sky as it curves downward because it's like a dome. I'll show you in a minute. But this huge hole opens up in their sky and all of these alien creatures start invading their world. As you can see, uh, let's see, right about here maybe? Yeah, right about here you'll be able to see all of the alien creatures that come out of this Look at that. Now they're all rushing down in. Now, this right here is basically um, a good example, a good movie for this is A Quiet Place, right? If you've ever seen A Quiet Place and there's those weird creatures or whatever, those monsters nobody has a name for, and you have to be super quiet, otherwise they'll hear you. Those are the predators of the Phantasoid race or the Phantasoid class or whatever you want to call it, okay? Um... That's what A Quiet Place is all about. Now, the reason in Quiet Place that you have to be so quiet, and I think I have actually broken down that movie. I can't remember. But the reason why you have to be so quiet is because these Phantasoids, when they come into our world, at least these particular types, these predatory types, look at that. You can see them crawling all over the dome. Look at that. Um, so basically, they're not used to having a sun. They're not used to having a focal point above them that's super bright. So they're all photophobic, okay? Okay. Um, let's see. Let me go ahead and play this part. I want to show you this. So they zoom out of their little farm world and you can see their world is covered by this little dome. Now I want to pause it because that's not the entire world. Now, if you lived within that little dome, you might think that that was the world, the whole world. But the reality is their sky bends downwards, giving the illusion that it goes on forever. And they're actually on what looks like a moon which is probably going to make a lot of you excited. I know some people have told me you, you got to go check out the moon map, the moon theory that basically we're like a little crater on a bigger world or something like that. So if you like that idea, you're going to like this particular segment here. But as you can see, there's multiple little domes everywhere or other realms or other worlds. So that one's pretty cool. That's one of my favorite ones. That's why I took so much time on it. Uh, let me jump back in the chat real quick. Uno momento. All right, if you want to get my attention in the chat, say anything, make a comment, or ask a question, just type in at JDreamers, and I will uh, hopefully get notified about it, and I'll respond. All right, so let's check out the next episode. Oh my god, there's so many more, and they're so good. All right, ooh, The Witness. Okay, so The Witness, this one's a little weird, and it's a little hard to comprehend, but it's a, it's a looping timeline. This girl, let me show you this girl. All right, so this girl at the beginning... She's getting dressed or whatever. She looks out of her window and she sees a murder, right? She looks across the way and she sees this, this guy basically murder this girl. Now, whenever she takes a look at the girl, she sees that it's herself. So she just watched herself get murdered by this guy. She doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't know what's happening. But because she saw him, he sees her and he starts tracking her down because he doesn't want any witnesses to this murder, which leads to her murder, which leads to her watching it over and over and over again. That describes perfectly from my perspective and my experience so far, our world. It's reincarnation. It is you having an experience in a particular body, dying, and then your spirit comes back inside. Why does it come back inside and reincarnate or go back into the flesh? It does that because of that domed world that we see, right? Um, spirits do not leave this world until the proper time. So those spirits get recycled, reincarnated. There's always exceptions to that. I believe there's actually a little home for spirits up in what we call the Aurora Borealis. Um, and I, I think it depends on where you are, when you die, how you die, and some other factors as well. But I do believe this particular episode is all about living repeat life cycles. And many of you can relate to that because I've spoken with many of you who have said, I feel, I know, I have memories like spirit memory of other lives, of other things, of other places. I close my eyes and if I focus on like my spirit memory or what I call spirit memory, um, I get a sense of being on like an island or a beach or something somewhere where everything's sort of tribal, but also advanced. So a lot of you will be able to relate to that. Um, but people who have little echoes of a past life 
tend to remember little bits and pieces. Not actual memory, but spirit memory. It's closer and more along the lines of a feeling that you remember as opposed to an actual, I can see it all and piece it together in my head. Some people can do that. All right, let's get on to this next episode. We talked about the witness, the sucker of souls. Oh my God. So this one right here. Now, some of these are cartoons, some are real and stuff, right? And I'll let you see here. So the sucker of souls about these guys who are on this expedition, they basically run into Dracula, right? And he's kind of drawn as this cartoonified version or whatever. We've talked about the vampires, right? Or the the vampires. Anyways, I have a whole video about vampires, and all kinds of videos about vampires. But uh, Dracula is what they find. And the whole crescendo to this particular episode is that Dracula cannot be stopped. He is crazy, insane, strong. He's bloodthirsty. He's got bloodlust. He's plasma possessed, as you can see by the red eyes and whatnot, right? See the red eyes? Boom. He's plasma possessed, right? What is plasma possession? It's over amplification of your core energy. Said, sem- made, uh, said shortly. Said simply, however you say it. So I want to show you this particular show uh, scene here. So they're fighting Dracula, right? And what is it that they finally use to get rid of this overpowered bipedal phanazoid creature from another world, right? Which is basically what the vampires are. Well, let me show you what happens here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is it here? Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to find it just because I can't. I have to be very careful about cycling through Netflix. I'm already certain I'm going to get like a copyright strike, even though clearly I'm commenting on all the. You're allowed to comment and play videos at the same time as long as you're basically constantly talking all throughout it and commenting on it, which is why I'm talking so much right now. Anyway, oh, that was gross. I don't want to watch that one. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just going to tell you what it was. It was a cat, okay? He was terrified of a cat. Hey, Mother Dragon, welcome back. I just saw Mother Dragon. Where'd she go? Hold on. All right, my screens are getting a little mixed up here. Hey, Mother Dragon, rejoin the Good Vibe Tribe, level four. Good to have you back, Mother Dragon. Um, all right, so let's get back into these episodes real quick. We're a little more than halfway done. We're talking about Netflix's show called Love, Death, and and robots. Now to me, these are not separate, individual, totally unrelated episodes of anything. To me, they're all 100% the exact same story of something that is happening worldwide, told from different timelines and different perspectives. So for example, if you've ever heard of uh, Cloverfield, all the different Cloverfield movies, if you've watched those it's probably a little confusing for you. You're like, how are these even related, right? But when you watch through the plasma apocalypse glasses, you can see that they're all the same exact event that's being told from different places and different timelines and stuff. All right, so let's get back over to Love, Death, and Robots. We're going to check out the next episode. We just talked about the Dracula one. Oh my god, I can't wait to get that one. Uh, let's see, we've got... Oh, so Dracula's afraid of cats. Do you see how this guy's holding a cat in the little picture right there? If I don't hover on it, you can see he's holding a cat, right? That's because the cat symbolism, I believe, is in reference to the werewolves, the dogmen, the cat people, etc. It is the elders of the vampire race or the elven race. Whenever they get really old, I believe they start to get hairy and uh, their ears keep growing, their nose keep growing, they grow horns and stuff, and they turn into basically Krampus, right? if they don't groom themselves and whatnot. Now, speaking of grooming yourself, you can see a great example of that in Hellboy, right? Hellboy is a great example of like the elven race that does not want to get old. So he's constantly like shaving off his horns and stuff, trying to, you know, keep his little be- goatee looking good or whatever. That That is the, el- the elder race of the L or the elves. And uh, that's them struggling to hold on to their youth, which they value beyond everything else the secret war this one's really good so this one also is about the exact same thing that i showed you with the phantasoids that come in the other one was cartoonified this one is a more real life version now i want to show you i'm just going to play this for a bit as you can see you're following these soldiers it's all great it looks like our world but then the atmosphere kind of starts to change as they go And this takes a huge turn when the atmosphere turns red. You'll see this in a lot of movies. 
That's when the magic enters into the world. That's when the crazy stuff starts to happen. When that sky, boom, turns blood red and changes color, that's your symbol that, hey, this is Plasma Apocalypse. And now you can see they're fighting off all these weird creatures and phantasoids that are the predatory type um, that enter up into their world. And actually in this episode, there's like, I, th I believe that there's these other soldiers that um, basically call on the phantasoids. Let me see if I can get a good picture of them for you, of the phantasoids at least. Let's see, what do we got here? So they're trying to fight these phantasoids. There they are. Now it's very blurry because they move very fast, which I'm sure that they actually do. Um, but these are the creatures from A Quiet Place. These are the predatory class of phantasoids that go about the world, you know, looking to sting, bite, kill. I don't know. Typically, I haven't really seen these monsters eat people. Um, and it's interesting, too, because in the Bible, it talks about in the book of Revelation in the end times, it says that there will be these creatures released upon the world, but they won't kill anybody. Okay? They don't eat anybody. I mean, for the most part, there's always exception, but they just are there to sort of screw up everybody's day. They are there to sting and infect and bite and uh, hurt people and stuff. So there's, did you see that? There was a, there was a great example of one right there. Oh, hold on. There it is. See this guy right here in the background? You'll notice in A Quiet Place and some other movies like that, they tend to be very similar looking. I can't believe that the people that make these movies just invent it off the top of their head and they all start looking the same. This is the exact same creature in that farmer one too. Okay, these are predatory class phantasoids. Okay, so let's get to the next one here. Uh, let me just double check the chat. I keep I keep bringing up. Uh, so I've got I'm in the chat and Cipher No One says Jay Jimmers that episode of the Secret War I think is what happened at the Tunguska event. Ooh, I like how you correlated the Tunguska event to the Phantasoids. Uh, and you know what? Um, it, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, the Tunguska event. Uh, if you Google it, you'll notice that somewhere in the region of Siberia. There is this foresty area that is just a complete circle of trees blown down, knocked down. And it almost looks like it was hit by like a comet or something like that. However, there is no cometary debris. There's no evidence of any kind of, um, you know, explosion or blast or anything like that. At least not like a fiery one or anything like that. Something happened though, and I believe it was electromagnetically discharged. Anyway, it's really cool, and he's right on point when he makes that. Now, this episode looks kind of corny. It's called When the Yogurt Took Over, right? It's a little cartoon, and basically, yogurt takes over the world, right? So you've got like this, these guys and this company, and they start talking to the yogurt, which becomes sentient. They raise the white flag. Oh, that's that was unexpected. <laughs> okay, anyways, uh, the yogurt base... Oh, my God. Okay, I'll skip all that. Okay. Jeez. Anyway, so the yogurt starts to take over the world. So how do we even explain that? It just sounds like complete ridiculous nonsense, right? It's not. It's symbolic. Symbolism in the movies is always going to speak in symbolism. It's not going to be plain with you. It's not going to tell you straight up. These movies speak in symbolic form. That's exactly where our language comes from it comes from pictures one after another after another after another after another and when you keep looking at all these pictures they turned into what we call letters you get context for a message and that's exactly what you're looking at right now you're being given a message somebody else oh adora caprice just regenerated <sighs> welcome to the good vibe tribe adora all right, so let's get on to the next one. And hey, welcome to all 204 people watching right now too. I'm Jay Dreamers. Welcome to my channel if you're brand new. Uh, I talk about weird and interesting stuff, okay? So I love my channel. I hope you get something out of it as well. Let's keep on going. We're breaking down Love, Death, and Robots in a series that I like to call Truth and Movies Mondays. Uh, so I'll basically break down a movie every Monday. All right, we're going to the next one here. The yogurt took over. Oh, actually, no, I got to explain what that means. So the yogurt is, um, yogurt represents just the same thing as milk, okay? Like whenever I've talked about in the past the Got Milk commercials that seem to be advertising for just milk in general and not any specific milk company. That's weird. 
don't you think? Right? There's a lot of milk symbolism and milk product symbolism in the movies. And a lot of times, the milk or those who drink it are depicted as the bad guys, right? The milky way, the milky whiteness of what we call space or the splendor of the heavens. That's what that re refers to. It refers to something else from outside of our world coming into our world like spilled milk, okay? So the yogurt basically represents something from the heavens coming in and taking over the world, okay? I'll let you use your own imagination on that. Sunny's Edge. This one is one of my favorite ones. It's beautiful. It's got an amazing story to it. Basically, there's this girl and her crew, and they're basically... Sorry, I had to burp. I didn't want to be rude. Um, basically, they, are, they have a neural link to this creature inside of this ring, right? And they have the creature fight against this other person's neural link creature. Now, oh, pause that. Subtleties. Subtleties in the movies that are not explained. Uh, those are my favorite, favorite anomalies and breadcrumbs to pick up on. If you pause it right here, you can see that her little logo is this cobra, this snake that stands up, right? And if you look at her little avatar that she brings into the ring, let's, let's take a look at it here. Here comes her little avatar. Let's skip forward a bit. This one is hers right there. Now, it has all these little tentacle type things off of it. It also has a sort of a reptilian vibe to it. Now, symbolically, oftentimes people in the mainstream media will combine symbolism to give you a little bit extra. Remember, the more pictures you have, the more context you have for the message, the better, the more detail you're getting for whatever is being conveyed to you. So what is being conveyed to you right now? That's the question that you've got to ask yourself. Um, if you would like to be amused by it, that's fine. If you would like to learn from it, even better. Anyway, so this girl hooks up, and this guy, he's, he's, in, he's in charge of the other one, right? He's very base, he's very worldly, and so his avatar looks and reflects as such. She's over here. Now, I'm going to cut to the chase. Okay, I'm going to spoil it for you guys, if you don't mind. So that girl... Actually, she she already died and she uploaded her mind into the avatar and then that her actual body This might be get a little confusing, but her actual body. Where is she? Oh Did you see that? Okay, let me skip forward a bit her actual body is basically robotic and her avatar body is her real self Just like in the movie avatar. So if you notice I skipped forward to this other scene right here I'm not gonna play this whole scene because it gets a little raunchy, which is awesome for some um, but you know, I can't play it on my channel. All right, which is too bad. But anyways, so if you skip forward a bit, you can see how the, the lighting has changed to all red. That should always be a flag for you telling you this is about the plasma apocalypse. This is about the world changing. All right, I definitely can't play that part. All right, let's just go ahead and skip this because the rest of it's pretty grown up, which is cool. All right, uh, let's see. We've got Ice Age. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I was just telling one of my friends about this. Um, uh, shout out to Lynette if you're out there watching. Hello. I was just telling uh, Lynette, my buddy, about this uh, Ice Age scene, right? So in this one, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And I want to freeze it on a particular, like, I want to freeze it. On, <laughs> I got to show you. I just have to, I have to show you real quick. Let's see. When are they looking into it? Hey, what the heck? Don't do that. Okay, pause it. Boom. Excellent. Okay, cool. So what happens is this guy from the Spider-Man movies or whatever he is and this girl, they move into a brand new house. They open up their freezer. As you can see, there's like all this ice all the way around the freezer. You know how if you, know, if you leave a freezer on and you don't you know, maintain it, after a very long time, it cakes up ice all the way around, right? So they open their freezer and they discover that there's this miniature world that's evolving and the timeline inside of that world down here moves ridiculously fast. To them, it's all going very slowly, right? But they actually zoom in on this world and they show you how fast it's going. Let me see if I could zoom in on it or let me see if I can show you. See, in this world, everything's going super fast. So time is just super accelerated. However, outside of that world where these people are looking from outside of the refrigerator, right? Okay, I know I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just so excited at the symbolism. This 
uh, frosty outer covering of this internal world, which is a freezer to them, right? This is their dome. That's their sky that you're looking at. It's an ice wall that goes all the way around their world. These gods or giants on the outside are looking down into it and time is uh, there's a time differential between what's happening inside of the freezer and what's happening outside of the freezer. So these guys are watching everything accelerate. There's like a nuclear bomb that goes off and it gives them like a sunburned face and everything. It's pretty hilarious. Um, anyway, this is, you're looking at your own story, our story. This is our story, okay? This, where they are out in the kitchen would be space, okay? This inside of the refrigerator, this enclosed dark world that's very cold, this is our world. All right. Uh, anyways, that one is a very, very cool thing to check out. It's only less than 10 minutes long. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, I got to pull up the chat. I keep forgetting about that. Oh, okay, okay. Let me get in the chat. Some people are saying some stuff. All right, we got Longle. Hey, what's up, Longle? Says, Jay Dreamers, a quiet place. They're literally called Death Angels. Whew, good point. I forgot about that. So the Death Angels, which angels are creatures that come from the heavens, right? Or outer space. Uh, Candy Jones is in the chat and says, look into Metal Hurlant Chronicles. It's just like Love, Death, and Robots and the Twilight Zone. Ooh, I'm going to have to remember that. I'm going to... Thanks for putting that in the chat, Candy. I appreciate it because I love this kind of stuff. And honestly, I've watched Love, Death, and Robots because of all of you. You guys give me all kinds of great recommendations all of the time. And even though I might not have time to respond to everybody's comments and stuff like that, because there's a lot, I don't have time. <laughs> um, I do check them out. You know, I do skim through. I always, always read everything in the chat. So if you're in the chat, I'm going to see what you said at least the day after if I don't, if I can't see it right now because I'm multitasking, right? All right. Uh, we also have the Metal Hurlant Chronicles. There's another weird one too. Have you guys seen that one? I forgot what it's called. It's a really weird show and I think it's only on Amazon. But what stands out in my mind is that they have this little commercial segment called like Cooking with Bill or something like that where it's basically like a knockoff of the old 80s like uh, – um, infomercials, but it goes terribly wrong. I don't know what that one's called, but that one's actually really good too. All right, let's get back to this. Um, oh, there's one more person in the chat here. We got uh, Dude Yahoo says, J Germers, let's find ways to destroy and dismantle the force screens surrounding our world. I don't know. I mean, I hear what you're saying. You want out. I do hear that. There's actually a lot of songs about that. Like, we want, we got to get out of this place if it's the last thing we ever do. It's like, a, it's like a song from the Vietnam War. Actually, if you listen to a lot of those Vietnam songs, they're all about the plasma apocalypse. However, I don't know if it's wise to just go out and destroy and dismantle the force field that is protecting our world from an inevitable apocalyptic situation. I hear you, and I support that. But I would probably, I would let that marinate for a bit before I jump on it. All right. So what else? We got, who else is in the chat? Angel? No, we got White Knight says, yes, J Dreamers. This is the best episode. Let's do a deep dive on it. Well, I can't today because there's a lot of episodes and I've got a few things I got to jump on too in my personal life. So maybe we'll come back to that. Uh, rather be outside, says J Dreamers. Where are the remains of these creatures from previous resets? Oh, Good question. Rather be outside asked an excellent question. Where are the remains of all of these phantasoids, right? If these creatures did and do fall into our world by probably the thousands, I don't know how many, a lot, right? Enough that they are seen by many. Where are their bones? Ah, this is where dinosaurs come into play, right? Or dinosaurs, whatever you want to call them. Nobody knows what dinosaurs look like, right? That's a whole enigma. They just find all these random bones of these giant creatures with horns and weird looking and this and that, and they use their imaginations to piece back together what they imagine they looked like. On top of it, I also did a few videos about uh, the time of the dinosaurs, the ruling dinosaurs, all this stuff, and it's all, to me, symbolic, okay? No, actually, I shouldn't say that. Half of it is symbolic as far as the words that are used to describe that kingdom of the dinosaurs, which is Earth, okay? Earth was the kingdom. The dinosaurs, uh, dino, what was it? Dino, ah, uh, shoot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to refer you guys to my video because I can't remember off the top of my head. But basically, the word soar is where we get saurian, sir, Caesar, Khazar, all these different words that mean ruler, 
essentially, or prince, right? And then dino, the dino princes, the dino rulers. So what does dino mean? I'm gonna leave that up to you. I actually forgot, so that'll be a fun little project. <laughs> um, but I did a lot of videos about it. <clears throat> All right, let's jump back into this. I'm gonna come back to the chat uh, when we're done. Say hello to everybody and we'll wrap things up. We're talking about love, death, and robots. We're breaking down how these seemingly un- related videos are all completely the same storyline. Uh, we've got, which one is next? We're almost done with season one. Ooh, Beyond the Aquila Rift. Oh my God, this one's good too. Okay, so check this out. So this guy right here, I gotta skip some of this because there's some, there's some grown up parts there, which are sweet, but you know, not for everybody. Um, so this guy right here, he basically is on this space, space mission. He goes into his little sleep pod, wakes up in the way wrong place, right? Sees his like ex-girlfriend from a forever ago. He's like, whoa, what are you doing here? And she's like, I don't know. You must be lost. Let's make the best of it and get naked. So they do. I'm gonna skip that part. And he's like, what's going on? And this chick starts to figure some stuff out. So she's like, wait a minute. You're not who you say you are. And she is not falling. Okay, let me explain that. I got I to gotta go back just a tiny bit. This girl right here sees his quote unquote ex-girlfriend. And, and she's not falling for the perception filter that is over his eyes. Okay? She sees this creature for what it really is. It's not a person. This blonde girl right here not actually a person. This guy starts to figure it out and he's like, you need to show me reality. You need to show me what's really going on here. So she says, all right, fine, I'll show you. But basically she's sad because she figures he's not going to love her anymore because she's not who she says she is. And so he says, show me my reality. She says, all right, you want to see what's really going on? His ship was stranded. This alien creature, um, kept him alive and basically plugged into his brain to interface with him to have some company uh, to hang out with him. As you can see, he's really actually super old. He's been out in space for a very long time. That's, the, that's also the time differential as well. Now, let's pause this. This is space, okay? They're showing you the artist's concept of what space looks like. Does it look like it has any space in it? No. Does it look like it's empty or black? No, it doesn't. This is now I'm going to I'm also going to like, you know, be fair about it because they do zoom out and they're this this stuff is in space. But this looks more like a spider's web with conduits and tunnels and entrances and little hubs and worlds all over the place, just like inside of the brain. Uh, so that's the truth that I get from this particular episode, how they show you our reality. Um, there's a lot more I could get into with the symbolism here. But for the sake of time, oh, there it is. They show you it out in space. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the next one. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I got to show you what that girl looks like. Oh, my God. It's the best part. Hold on. I'm going to show you what that girl really looks like, the blonde girl in the Aquila Rift. Uh, where was it? Aquila Rift. Let's go check it out. Highly recommend this show if you have never seen uh, Love, Death, and Robots. Highly recommend it. So remember that blonde girl, his ex-girlfriend? He's like, show me everything. Okay, so this is her, right? But then when she shows him reality, let's see what she really looks like. Hold on. You got to really see it from the beginning. He looks down the hallway and he hears her voice. And he's like, oh, here she comes. Oh, there she is. There she is right there. She's walking right towards me. And then she's, what the? F Whoa. Okay. Okay. Now, let me pause this real quick. Okay. As scary as that might look to you, it's only scary because you're unfamiliar with it. Okay. I'm not actually scared of this. It's weird looking. I would not want that thing to just crawl all over me or do anything that's uninvited or whatever. But this is another creature. This is a phantazoid. This is an alien, if you want to call it that. They always have that same pearlescent sort of milky white skin that has a slight glimmer, a slight shine to it. Uh, so I did want to point that out to you and also show you what the movies portray their skin as being. Even in The Quiet Place, you can see that the, the monsters of the Death Angels, their skin is the exact same way. It's usually like this dull gray, but also kind of slimy and shiny look to it. All right, let's get to the next episode. Love, Death, and Robots. That was the Aquila Rift, which brings us to Three Robots. Okay, so this one is so funny. A lot of these are pretty serious. This one is very humorous. It's about these three different robots that are exploring a post-apocalyptic uh, city. Okay, they're on vacation. They're actually going around taking pictures of stuff, documenting it, because this is long after humans have died. Okay, so, um, there's a lot you could talk about of this particular episode, but the one thing I wanna bring up is cats. 
are also in this episode. You see right there? You see that? Cats are in almost every single one of these. Uh, it's it's a it's a repeating theme in Love, Death, and Robots. It could it probably could have been called Love, Cats, and Robots. You know, why are the cats in here? Why is this robot? All of these robots are terrified of this cat. They believe that this cat um, can overthrow the world and. Um, they talk about exploding kittens and stuff, but like I said, it's that cat symbolism. It's not the actual feline cat, but it's the symbolic, uh, it's the symbolism of the elders of the, <laughs> see, it's got an opposable thumb. So they did that on purpose because the cat, cats don't have opposable thumbs, right? But the cat as a symbol as a cat person or a dog person or whatever, when you give it opposable thumbs, all of a sudden becomes very intelligent and smart and can take over the world, etc. And that goes back to my werewolf video. All right, let's see what else we got here. We're almost back into season two now. All right, we were at, we're on season two. Oh my goodness, this one is so good. I chose this one to be the uh, the thumbnail for this actual entire, this entire video. It's called The Drowned Giant right? As you can see, the drowned giant. And it's very like modern day, but out of nowhere, this dead titan washes ashore, right? This guy right here totally washes up on the beach in England, in the UK somewhere. And this guy right here is documenting everything from the time that is first seen by people to the time where over, over time, its body starts to decay and get older and stuff. Now, although this titan is dead, right? It's also, there's a little symbolism there in the color of his skin, as we were just talking about. That sort of off-white, grayish kind of uh, shiny look. He, he would be shiny because of the water he just came from and stuff. But this guy documents people's reaction to it, right? And they show you how people don't really even look into it. They don't seem to care. They actually just start playing on the dead giant's body and mutilating it, and they'll draw... Um, they'll draw, what do you call that? Whenever you tag up stuff, they'll tag on the body of the giant and stuff like that. And this is a part of our existence. It's a part of our world. This is the Titans that walk our world after the plasma apocalypse comes. Now, where do the Titans come from? Do I think that Titans themselves just drop down out of space? space or the sky or whatever possibly however i'm more inclined to believe that they grow here that all life in this world grows to immense size um after this apocalyptic event happens and the world is depressurized and gravity is weakened and whatnot right so this guy could be like a survivor from our world going into the new world or the next world where the titans which I mean, this could be his son or his grandson or great grandson or whatever in a far removed future so this one's very interesting to me. Not only is it interesting just because it has a, a Titan in it. As you can see, like people started moving the bones about. Um, the Titan bones don't just stay there in one spot, right? So here's a great example. Oh, I don't know how great that an example that is. <laughs> okay, here's a better. No, not that one either. Jesus. All right, so here's a good example. All right, so... Um, People would ask, like, hey, if there were giants and titans and phantasoids, like, where's all their stuff left behind? If you saw this giant body dead on the beach, just like we did in the beginning here, right? You would imagine over time it would decay and you'd see just a huge dead skeleton laying right there. But they show you in this episode that humans add as a, as a playing factor to what happens to these amazing pieces of history even if they're dead bodies of titans or giants or whatever uh as you can see he starts getting older and stuff as time goes on they start writing all over him they have zero respect for their own history they just take it for granted it just is there for their own amusement they're not cataloging it they're not thinking about it there's only a few people including the main guy who's in this video who are taking this seriously and wondering at it Instead of saying, oh, something to jump on, something to dance on, something to, to play with and make fun of and take pictures of, some sort of sideshow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is all it ends up being, right? It just ends up being a few bones that are left behind that now look like rocks, basically, right? And we just settle in all the way around it. That is mud fossil theory in short. I believe it's a huge part of our world that we live in where... 
ancient life and future life becomes gigantic and became gigantic in comparison to our stature that we have today. All right, let's, let's skip on to the next one. And we've got the Drowned Giant. Oh, the Drowned Giant, too. That's pretty key. Okay, not only is it just a dead giant, it's a drowned giant. They don't... They, you, Nobody knows how that giant died. He just washed ashore, so they assumed he drowned. They don't say that definitely. Why did they make him, and why did they make the title a drowned giant? Well, I did a whole a whole video, a few of them, about the gargoyles, or in the gorgons, okay? And the origin and etymology of the root of gorgon, which is garg, garg, gargamel, gargle, all of these things, um, the... the uh, what do you call them? What do you, what do you call those statues on the sides of buildings? I totally forgot. Um, oh, man, I totally forgot. Anyways, all of these words are related to taking water into your mouth and drinking it, essentially, or, or drowning on it, okay? So where am I going with that? I believe that a lot of the ancient titans um, drowned, essentially, during an apocalyptic event. So... How could they drown, especially if there's zero gravity and stuff, right? Well, one, they don't have a lot of places to hide from all of the chaos that's happening because of their immense and sheer size. Two, there's liquefaction happening that is causing them to literally sink into the earth itself, right? So they drown into the earth. A lot of times that comes with water and stuff, especially if you're talking about the plasma apocalypse that introduces worldwide flooding uh, as evidenced by our oceans. Life Hutch. So this one right here is about this guy who gets stuck in this little facility or whatnot. Hold on, let me show you a little picture here. So this guy's stuck in this facility. He falls down and there's this robot. There he is, okay? And this robot is supposed to be there just like, you know, as a service robot, right? And he's not afraid. As you can see, little green lights blinking. I bet you that light turns red. I don't even remember, but I'll bet you that light changes color. So anyway... Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> so this this robot flips out and it goes into kill mode. And this you see this all over the place where robots all of a sudden just glitch and they're like, must kill, must destroy, etc. I did a, a whole movie series in my Truth and Movie segment um, about maximum overdrive. And we talk about how the plasma comes into our world and it gives life, literally, and independent thought or decision making to what we call our animatronics and our robots and our electronics, etc. And that would also be Skynet if you're like a Terminator fan. All right, let's go to the next one here. We've got all through the house. Oh my God, this one's one of my favorite ones. Hold on, let me bring up the chat real quick. I keep forgetting to look at the chat. Rather be outside, says Jay Dreamers. Where are the remains? Oh, we already said that one. Decanio Baggio says, Jay Dreamers, Mario and Rabbids spark of hope trailer plasma apocalypse totally agree i have not seen that one but if it's anything like uh super what is it called super bash brothers or whatever and and that introduction pfft, totally on point cypher no one says oats studio man thank you that's totally the name of it i highly recommend checking that one out it's real weird but if you like weird stuff like love death and robots or black mirror you'll also like Probably Oats Studios. They're all little shorts. Thank you for that. Okay, so let's move on to this next one. So basically, you start off Christmas time. Oh, how nice. Now, remember, Christmas time is one of the times in which the apocalypse reoccurs. It's the Christmas Day catastrophe of Doctor Who. It's why all the shit hits the fan, excuse my language, in so many movies around Christmas time. And while there's so much chaos around Christmas time, Gremlins is a great movie for a, a Christmas Day catastrophe. There's a lot of those. But anyways, it's, this movie starts off, you see the kids are waking up, they're excited. Oh, they heard some jingle bells on the roof. They're like, oh man, let's go downstairs. Let's go check it out. And they see like a little shadow in the background. Where is it? Hold on. Let me... <laughs> So it's a little shadow next to the Christmas tree and they're like, oh, it's Santa. It's Santa, right? Well, what what is a Santa? Like there's there's not really a Santa, but there is there are otherworldly beings, right? So let me just show you this part. You see the glass of milk right there? So they're like, oh, Santa's going to see our milk and cookies. And then, oh, shoot, what's going on? Oh, my God. This kid just pooped his pants probably right and he's like oh my god what in the hell is that what is going on here that is what is that right so this creature 
This is a Phantazoid, okay? On Christmas, making, making its way into the world. This Phantazoid comes out, stands in front of these children. It gets really close to them and smells them. It's like, and then it's like, good. <laughs> and it actually regurgitates and pukes out a gift for the child, right? So let me explain something here. I'll forget about how gross it is. Forget about how cartoonified and weird it looks. There is an element, a strong element, I would say, of truth to this episode. These phantazoids that look like they would kill people and just be murderous and hell-bent on destruction and death and stuff, in this particular episode, they show you that they actually are just like Santa Claus where they know if you're good or if you're bad and they kill the bad people and they leave alone the good people. It all has to do with vibes, your aura, vibration, stuff like that. These are otherworldly beings. Who's to say that they can't see your aura, that they can't smell your, your fear and your love and all these other things, right? So I found this to be extremely amazingly hilarious creepy funny weird the kid takes the present this he looks right at the other kid who's just probably pooped his pants and he's like let me smell you now and he gets all close to him let me see so he sniffs him let me see watch him sniff him look how close he's like ah and he's like oh you're good too so they both get presents right and then uh they're like staying up all night long and basically the girl's like what would happen if we weren't good well, you would have been eaten or bitten or something by a phantazoid. Hey, DB's in the chat. DB just donated and says, You think the creators of these shows are in the know about the reoccurring catastrophes? Or they're just given creative freedom with hints thrown in? That's a good question, DB, and thanks for your support. I appreciate it. So here's my thoughts on the movies. Hey, Con Muller just donated. As well, thank you for thank you. Put a little super chat sticker in there. So it's it's my belief that there is both. Okay, I believe that in Hollywood there are those who know, and they don't tell. There are those who know and they share. They give you all of the hints. They give you the breadcrumbs and stuff. And there are, and then there are those who don't know. However, there is no such thing in my world as a complete lie. Everything, nothing can be truly fabricated. It just has to be. People reach out into what we, what we call the ether or spirit memory and they can tap into something that's already there just like i do just like many of you do so that's my answer to that one thank you so much for your donation and what's up to 243 people watching my channel right now hey that's pretty sweet we're breaking down love death and robots every monday we're basically going to do something similar to this where i'm going to do a, a movie breakdown this one is actually going to be love death and robots so let's check out the rest of this here we're talking about how Love, Death, and Robots is not individual episodes that are unrelated, as it seems, but they're all interconnected storylines from various perspectives and timelines of something that happens to our world. All right, so we had all through the house, The Tall Grass. I'm not going to show you guys this one. I did a whole movie breakdown of Stephen King's In the Tall Grass. This is totally, this is not that movie, but it's the exact same concept, okay? You see this guy get off of this train. Right? The train symbolism, if you ever see the train or a subway or something like that in movies, all, almost every time across the board, especially if there's a lot of real strong plasma apocalypse symbolism in it, um, that represents the conduits between realities or between realms or between worlds. There are plasma conduits or vortices out there in space connecting realm to realm. Okay, uh, They're all connected so that they can send and receive information from and to one another. So... If you ever see the train and stuff like that, like uh, the Polar Express or the Matrix, all these movies that show this stuff into this into this Spider Verse and stuff like that, they have train symbolism, subway symbolism, and that's what that is. Okay. So in the tall grass, when you see all this huge tall grass symbolism, that's literal. Like I believe that the grass will literally keep on growing and get gigantic. Maybe different types of grass in the world to come because um if you want more information about this watch my video called plants vs zombies in real life and i'll be happy to share with you how all of the plants and the flora and fauna of our world grow to gigantic proportions and sizes and we who have already matured 
do not. So we basically are like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids walking around in a huge garden world. Um, all right, then we got this one, Snow in the Desert. Uh, this one has a lot to it, but basically it's about this guy who's an albino outsider and he's got a bounty on his head. Everyone, it says every, every bounty, bounty hunter in the galaxy wants a piece of snow. Now, why do they call him snow? Oh, well, it's cause he's albino. Yes, it could be, but it also represents where he's from. Just like the red hot chili peppers have a snow. I mean, have, have a song called snow. And snow represents what it's like, the weather outside, outside of our dome, outside of our world. I don't think it's really snowing out there, but it's just the color, okay? All right, then we got the Pop Squad. I'm going to go through these next couple of ones kind of quickly. This guy is about, um, he is a cop in the future who is trying to keep the world's population under control. But then he has a, he has a change of conscience and he decides that he's not really supporting that any longer as well this is like set in some far off future where people don't die. People just live forever. Post-apocalyptic world, I believe that that's exactly what happens to us. Now, in the post-apocalyptic world, um, this, this particular episode is about them trying to keep people from having babies, right? Sometimes that's how these movies and shows are presented, that either the world cannot have babies, people cannot have children for some reason, and therefore... It's almost a pandemic in and of itself, just like in um, The Handmaid's Tale is an excellent example of that. Sometimes it's just everyone in the future is just young and they're prepubescent and they just can't have babies or whatever. Either way, there's a similar theme I've noticed throughout all of these movies about children and the youth populating the world, but... Um, actually having babies is a different story. Now, I'm just going to cut to the chase on that. I believe that something happens in these post-apocalyptic um, situations when our world goes through these cataclysms. Either, possibly, it sends us physically back to a prepubescent state. Hey, Lucian! Hey, just donated $25 and put a little sticker in the super chat with this little pear guy working out. <laughs> Reminds me of me earlier. Thank you, Lucian. I appreciate you. Is it Ron or Lucian? Either way, thank you. Um, so, there's something wrong with the population in the future. And I'm probably going to go into more detail on that on another one. This one is also about the future, how peop there are certain people who mod their bodies and they combine technology with their natural state. This guy doesn't. Um, that one's kind of boring to me, but actually, I do want to show you one part. Okay, there's this part where they have these sort of space whales towards the end. And I want to show you these things because I did a whole video about space whales. And I want everyone to be able to see what they're portrayed like here in this particular segment. So I'm going to show you. There's the space whales. You see that? They're just jumping everywhere. They all light up too. Oh my god, that reminds me of something. Okay, so i got to pause real quick. Um, I'm going to be doing about four videos a week. Four or five, I can't remember. We're going to do Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So five days a week, we're going to do videos here um, as, as, as much and as often as I can. Um, my next video is going to be about outrunning the rain, staying out of the rain, running away from the rain. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but it's going to be about bad rain, poison rain, death rain, whatever you want to call it. The rain of death, you can call it a lot of things. Um... But it's interesting because I came across an article that talked about how there was this blood rain and there were these cells that, that were taken in samples from the blood rain in India. And those cells, whenever it's subjected to different types of light spectrums, they glowed, they fluoresced, they changed colors and they lit up. It was really interesting. All right, let's get on to the next episode. Love, Death and Robots. We're almost done here. All episodes, this is the last one, automated customer service. So this one's pretty simple. You got this old lady right here. She's She bought one of the wonder, wonderful new robots that's supposed to be helping her out, cleans up her house, reminds her of stuff. It's her little slave. It's her little robot servant. But then it starts to act a little weird, and it starts to rebel against her. And then eventually it starts to try to kill her. Technology turning on its own creator which is a recurring theme in our world as well. 
I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there. I'm gonna let that be for a second. I am done talking about love, death, and robots. We just went over the gist of a lot of these. If you took anything away from this, it's not, it shouldn't be about any one particular episode, but just seeing the interconnectedness between all of these episodes. If you're able to do that on a show like this, I promise you, you'll be able to continue doing that in the rest of the world. You'll be able to start putting the puzzle pieces together and seeing the interconnectedness of all things. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I felt like we have a really good session today and I'm trying to keep my videos a little shorter. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody. Um, speaking of thanks, I do want to let you guys know we're going to be doing a uh, Truth in Movies on Mondays. We're going to be doing a, about three different topical segments or whatnot. And I'm going to introduce one of my buddies, Aquaman. I have talked about him from time to time. He used to have his own YouTube channel. We are going to, we have something in the works. We're basically, we're thinking about doing like a thing. He comes over every Wednesday. We have like a six pack and we have some beers and we talk about the world. And we might just be recording that for you guys to listen to. DB donated through the super chat. He says, movie suggestion, The Signal with Lawrence Fishburne. I'm not sure if you've seen it, Jay, but it touches on the simulation theory and the worlds within worlds. I have seen it. That is a great one uh, to do. I'll keep that one in mind. Thank you. Um, also, if you're new to my channel, as you've seen up here on the scroller, I do have my own website. Please go check out my website, jdreamers.com. I'm very proud of it. It's got a lot of great visual examples of these different topics that I talk about. And you may have noticed people donating in the super chat throughout this video, which I never ask for, but people do, which honestly just inspires me to keep on doing more videos. I love it. Like, it's great. And um, I am making a lot more time for all of you these days. So all of your support super helps me out to pay the bills, rent, gas, all that kind of stuff. Um, and take care of my kids too. So I appreciate you for that. Um, I did want to say if you missed any of my live streams, YouTube has just come out with a brand new feature where you can actually say thanks and uh, send like a donation or something from a video. So if you watch one of my older videos, but you're not in the live stream or whatever, you can click that thanks button and you can actually send me a donation and it will highlight your comment on that video so that you can send the donation, it highlights it, and then you can make another comment underneath it. I check all of those. So I am, although I don't have time to check 50,000 people's comments every day, um, I am going to start checking the super thanks comments and responding to every single one of them. Occasionally, I will actually bring them up on the live stream and just give people shout outs. And then I have another tier uh, membership tier where if you leave a comment on any of my videos every morning and every night I go through them checking for that tier and above and I promise I will actually respond to everybody's comments um, if you're on that tier or above so unfortunately I wish I could I had time to respond to everybody's comments I ran out of time a long time ago but this is a way that helps me to sustain myself financially and to continue getting money to like pay bills and do what I love doing and a way for many of you to just show your gratitude and say, hey, I got something from that. I found some value in that. So let me give you some value too. Totally don't have to, but I just want to let you guys know all of these things are there and available for you. Okay. Never feel pressure to donate. Never feel pressure to subscribe or anything like that. You don't even have to like the video if you don't like it. You don't have to like it if you do like it. But I do want to throw it out there and let you guys know what's available to you. All right, so with that, I think we had a pretty good time. We've been talking for a little over an hour, so I went over my hour marker, and there's 200 people watching still. I'm going to wish you guys all the best. Until next time, I'm Jay Dreamers saying good vibes and goodbye. Oh, enjoy the new credits, by the way.
no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. Okay. So I actually forgot to upload the brand new credits. So I want to skirt. I'm just going to slam on the brakes real quick. Take a hard left. Let's get the right credits on there because I did spend hours and hours on it working on it. And I want you guys to have the um, the recognition that I, I want you to have as well because I love all of you. So let me see if I can get the right credits on the screen here. And I hope you enjoy. Rock out to the song. <laughs>